All right. Hey, welcome to the show about Shield, uh, the impromptu podcast with Kevin. Uh, that's me. That's Kevin. him. That's the one. Uh, we uh, we just got done. Well, I just got done watching Shield. He watched it live. Um, and I texted him. I was like, "Hey, did you watch Shield? It was great." And he was like, "No, nah, I didn't like it." So we had we had a text conversation about it, and then he was just like, "Hey, why don't we talk about it on a podcast?" So now it's happening. Oh, uh, jeez. So, uh, so yeah, we're doing uh, an impromptu podcast here. I mean, all podcasts are kind of impromptu. Uh, I I mean, I guess well, maybe <laughs> when they start, but. Yeah. You should see like the the Marvel podcast that they do this week in Marvel. It's really structured. It's like two and a half hours long. It's ridiculous. Uh, already off topic, am I right? Fellas? Anyway, okay, so let's let's get on topic. So Shield, um, right, I'll let you start off. Talk about why you thought it was good. Okay, I will rebuttal. So this episode has made Agents of Shield. I I uh I didn't really have a favorite television show because I don't watch a lot of TV, but. This episode has both made my made Agents of Shield my favorite TV show, and this is also my favorite episode of the show of all time. Oh my god, I, I, I can't wrap my mind my mind around that. <laughs> For now, at least, and um, the I think the the main parts about that are just the, like the main factors that play into that are just Elizabeth Henstridge's yeah, Henstridge's acting, the just the the heavy inspiration from Star Wars and Planet of the Apes, which are two of my favorite movie franchises, and, um, just, like, the, the, all the, like, every line in the show, like, brought up another, like, triggered something in my comic book brain to, that went on this wild theory tangent the whole time, so. Trigger joke. What tr- triggered am I tr- <laughs> Wow. So, Kevin, you, on the yes. other hand. Uh, so... To me, it looked like 40 minutes of stretched out that one part in Mad Max where everything was blue for way too long. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, literally, it just looked like Arizona with a blue filter over it. Like, I just didn't like it visually. I, I, that was my first thought. It was like, see, I liked it actually in small doses, like when they first went to the portal in like one of the previous episodes. Oh, like when it, when it showed Simmons going sucked in. I think it was just the mm-hmm. previous one where it first showed her in there. And I was like, this looks cool. But then, like, after seeing it for like 10 minutes, you, I, it dawned on me that it was just like, you know, Arizona with a blue filter over, or like some kind of desert area. And I mean, I guess it's kind of like Planet of the Apes, but Planet of the Apes is more believable in the way that it didn't try too hard to make it look alien. It just, it was all in the imagination because you knew it was somewhere on Earth, I suppose. But um, yeah, so I guess the visuals well, that, just that's weren't the working. twist. Yeah, Planet I know, exactly. Apes. That's that, that's cool. That is, that it actually is on Earth. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, well, you're thinking it's not on Earth at the at first. Yeah. And your mind is like, whoa, this is an alien world. And then it, it, like, totally fucks your mind over when you see the Statue of Liberty and you're like, what the heck? <laughs> what the heck? So, <laughs> um, but, but honestly, um, I just think, like, I don't, I can't see why you like the episode because I thought that it, it was very structured in a way that, you know, it's been done before where, um, person goes into wasteland they're unfamiliar with and they get toughened up and they learn how to survive in the area and then they work on an escape and it just like it just felt really out of place for the show and I know you said you liked it because it had a lot of connections to the comic books but as someone who doesn't read comics I couldn't see that yeah. so it was really just like like she, she finds the guy and I really just wanted to be friends and they started making out and I was like uh, uh. And I mean, I asked, you said I, I, on the text, you were like, yeah, well, fucking, um, if you're the only other person there, of course you're going to make out at some point, but, like, I don't know. Yeah, that, that I mean, it made sense to me. Like, at first, yeah. I, I felt the same way. Like, yeah. I was, I was like, I hope they don't, like, make them get together. And when they did, I was like, eh, I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it, 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 it just, it makes sense to me. They didn't have to do it. They did not have to do it. It just kind of made sense. Um, yeah, I can see that. But, okay. so, yeah, the part about just, like, it having structure and everything, which I think structure is fine, um, especially in something like... Oh, that's what I was going to say. So the structure's fine and everything, um, but you were saying about how uh, this episode feels really out of place, which yeah. I 100% agree with, but I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it lends to the actual episode, because the whole time... Almost all of the 42 minutes of this episode, you're on an alien planet. So everything should feel weird and should feel different. And, like, it's it's uh, something I saw online is people were calling it a bottle episode. Because that's what it is. It's just, yeah, it's, it's for the most part, it's it's a self, it's the self-contained story of, of 
Simmons being sucked into the monolith and showing up on whatever this planet is. Um, we'll get to what I think the planet is later. Um, and whatever this planet is, and surviving there, and meeting this guy, and this guy talking about the planet and stuff. And I, th- I thought it was cool. And I, th- I think, like, the th- that's another thing that I wanted to talk about is the editing. Because the editing in this episode was way different, and, and I loved it. Yeah, I think that's probably why I had a bit of an Uncanny Valley feel. Like, it just mm-hmm. felt like a different show. Yeah. Uh, and I, I just want to say, this is kind of out of place. Remember you said her acting was extremely amazing? And this... I agree it was for the most part, but there was a point where, like, when she first got on the planet... And it was like it was like seventy two hours later, and she just was like like on a hill on her knees screaming and like zoomed out, and I kind of laughed really hard at that because it was really cheesy, and it reminded me of that scene of Planet of the Apes where <laughs> you already know what I'm talking about, where it like zooms into his face. I think oh that yeah. Makes sense. yeah. <laughs> bring up bring up a clip of that. More <laughs> more editing work for you, but it's, it's like the Whoa. funniest thing in the world. I laughed so hard. It reminded me. Of, so I definitely agree. It does. It was the off. it was the scene where she was yelling for the sun, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was yelling See, like, "Where's the sun?" I liked that because I took it as not her just screaming at the sun. I took it at her as well, her degrading her. Sanity. Yeah, her already like, seventy two hours in, her going crazy, I mean, and then I, her kind of getting over that afterwards and just submitting to like that was that was the moment where she was like, "Okay, I'm stuck here. Yeah. I gotta figure this out." Like Fitz isn't coming for me. I just, I mean, that's part of a. Uh... Okay, I remember you said you don't have a problem with it being structured. I don't have a problem mm-hmm. with them being structured either, because most of the Agents of Shield plots are pretty structured, but they're unique. Is the thing they're always yeah. extremely unique, and they always have a really the, things that have never been done before, which is why I like it so much. Um, you know, there's before like, before I wanted to watch it before I watched it in the first place, and the reason I didn't watch it was because I thought it was just gonna be the same old comic stuff, and I was proven wrong. It's really interesting and a lot of unique stuff, and uh, I think that the new episode just didn't lend itself to that. And uh, I don't know. I just was kind of bored <laughs> the whole time, honestly. I think the I, the the structure of like the things that are g- going to be different, and going to be changed, are going to be going forward. Yeah. Because like the whole episode, I had this feeling of, all right, this is great and all, but what's happening back home like what are the repercussions of this when they go yeah. back to this planet with the knowledge that simmons have has and all the technology of shield and probably more than just simmons yeah. what the hell is gonna happen i mean i guess i guess we could start talking about what you think uh the planet, the planet is, is? i have no idea what your theory is all right uh, yeah go ahead and- so my theory is because because Will, the the guy on the planet that Simmons Spaceman. found, uh, we probably sh- I'll I'll like do an intro to this before saying that there's spoilers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but. Too late for that. Yeah. So, the uh, the planet I believe is Ego, the living planet. Who? Let me bring up like, like Ego here real quick it's on the perfect name the for a living planet because I imagine right? a living planet would have a pretty big ego. <laughs> yeah, but Ego, the living planet is a planet who's got like a face and and he's alive i don't know much about him but i the just moon. know that oh my he god exists. he looks like the moon from majora's mask oh yeah he kind of I mean, does the face is different but like yeah he looks pretty similar <laughs> with the yellow eyes yeah so the the reason that i think that the planet is ego is because um the, will kept talking about how the planet's alive and that the the sandstorms are not are not like a coincidence and they're not just happening like he said they're moods. Yeah. yeah, they're they're yeah. mood swings. So th- like, that's not. I don't think that's a metaphor. I think like that's Will's like spot on there. That that's ego, like saying, "Hey, get the hell off my my face! I don't want you here." Um, and I think it makes a lot of sense. My theories before, like, I didn't even have. I didn't even. This didn't even dawn on me when I was doing because I did a an episode of the show a couple weeks back on, like, before Season 3 premiered, on what happened to Simmons. And it was just a bunch of theories on that. And the 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 most... The prime theory at that time was that it was Hala, which is the home world of the Kree. Hala. And my <laughs> my main reasoning for that is because Jai Ying from Season 2 and, and pretty much every other Inhuman that knew anything about it kept saying that it's dangerous to them and that it could kill all of them. Which we still don't know why this this monolith is so dangerous to the Inhumans. It doesn't. 
Oh yeah, they never specifically say. No, I, I guess the Inhumans knew what it was, or at least they knew what it did. They knew. They knew I don't know that what the, they never explained what their extent of their knowledge is, but all Jaying said was that it could kill our entire race or something like that. So, so why specifically could, the Inhumans, or is oh, she so just? Were, yeah, I guess you could think I, the Kree plan would make sense. Yeah, because if it's the Kree, the Kree uh, you're trying, and then like another theory on that is when after people saw that it's kind of a desert planet. In the first episode, people are saying, well, it can't be Hala, because Hala is very civilized, and it's kind of like Coruscant in Star Wars, which is fair, but then, like, the theory that popped up in my head, the next logical step was that it's just a prison planet that the Kree put Inhumans on. Oh, yeah. Which leads to another theory that maybe Will is Lash, but that's that's a whole nother... Will is Lash. That's, that, like, that's not gonna happen, that's just... Yeah, I, I was gonna say it. <laughs> that's just like, dumb. If, if they managed to pull it off, I'd be pretty. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He was like, he was like, like, in the night, he was somehow like getting to the portal and going and fucking shit up on Earth. I mean, Lash can teleport. Oh, that's can he? so. That power? Oh yeah, that's true. In the, co- I, don't I don't think he can teleport in the comics, but they've shown in the, in the show that yeah. he can teleport. Like he, he he doesn't he doesn't transform to a human or whatever he transforms to in the comics either. But what, uh, what is his specific power? Just like blue energy. Yeah. He he um. He's kind of like you know that guy in Days of in X Men Days of Future Past, uh, Bishop. That yeah, yeah. People shoot energy into him and he redirects it. I'm pretty sure that's what Lash can do. And again, he's a very recent character. Yeah, so. and, and he changed. They changed a lot of things for this show, so it could be yeah. entirely. So how would uh it, the planet being ego tie to the Inhumans thinking it could kill them? Does ego I, have like a? I don't kill know. I as far as I know, ego is tied to Thor mostly. And in what ways? Thor and Galactus. Like he, his first appearance was in Thor, issue something or other, um, and something about like I, I'm just looking at his wiki page and it's really short, so he doesn't have that many appearances. And again, this is a very crackpot theory. Like if they actually make it ego, that's going to be crazy. Like the most the the, the theory <laughs> that. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say seeing Ego's face, like in for if like in real life and not drawn, that would be fucking. That would yeah, be that'd awful. be terrifying. <laughs> Especially with the Shield's budget, I guess. Yeah. Increase, but. Um, but the, I think maybe if they do decide to make it Ego, they're never gonna show him in the show. At least oh, they're yeah. just gonna say Crazy. it's, like they did in um the the original Fantastic Four movies where they had Galactus in him, but he wasn't normal Galactus, he was Ultimate Galactus, which is just, like, a space fart. Which is dumb, but I don't know why people complain about that so much, because that's what he's like in the Ultimate Universe. <laughs> they were pulling from comic sources, just the wrong comic sources. I mean, even if they were pulling from comic sources, it was pretty clear that they did it because they were too lazy. Yeah, so. and also, I'm, I'm pretty sure if people saw a giant walking spaceman, purple spaceman, they they would be like, eh, this movie looks dumb. I don't know, I would have been pretty fucking excited at this point. Well, that's you, you're not the general public, dude. <laughs> you, saw, you see the man? It's pretty... <laughs> fucking Galactus? Dude, fucking, um, in, uh, what's Marvel Ultimate Alliance, Galactus is the bomb. I, I love <laughs> Galactus is great. I just I love his, I just love how big he is. It's so terrifying. Just the concept. Just this giant ass fucking planet eater. All right. We're, um, we're so not yeah, talking Google about Galactus Lash. though. I, I what? We're not talking about Galactus though. Sorry, sorry. So what I you, Googled, you find? I, yeah, I googled Lash, and you were right. His his power is energy conversion. He okay. takes powers and emits it from his palms. Cool. Yeah, and his like his his motive is what makes him an interesting character. Is that he just he he wants to put the Inhumans out of their uh, misery, right? No. Maybe in the show. I'm not sure that's if it's... What it wasn't, that's what it was in the show. Okay, well, in the comics, he's trying... He's he's deciding whether or not an Inhuman is worthy of their powers. So if they're oh. not, he kills them. If they are, he just lets them be. I like that a lot more. Because in the show, I think they made it... it, it I, I could be wrong, but I think they made it pretty clear um, that but, he was putting Inhumans out of their misery because Inhumans were unnatural. He was going to kill them. We also don't. We haven't really met Lash yet, so we don't know yeah. his full motives. Oh no, yeah, we met um, the guy who's who was doing the hacking yeah. for Lash, and his he said, buddy. "Yeah, he was like, he's just he's putting the Inhumans out of their misery because they're disgusting creatures that should never exist." Oh. I, something like that. Probably not those exact words. But that uh, does make a lot of sense, though, if that was his motive. Because if he yeah. was a human who could transform into an Inhuman, mm-hmm. it makes sense for someone like that to like say, "Oh, this is a curse." Yeah, that I don't like. 
I mean, but he's probably gonna kill himself after he finishes his goal. Probably. There, I'm sure, knowing Shield, they're gonna go in some different direction that we wouldn't expect until it happens. Yeah, no kidding. So. <laughs> in Human Village, Jesus, that fucked me up. <laughs> no, but uh, let's get back on track slightly here. Yeah. So the the next the next big theory that I have that that I that I came up with while watching this, which I'm pretty sure this is the most obvious one, is um, besides this being like just ego putting his like soul into whatever is the the it the act the thing that simmons and will kept seeing um and to me that's mistress death who mistress death is the personification of death in the marvel universe and she's also the one true love of none other than the mad titan thanos and deadpool but he's not important um oh i love her design (laughs) yeah she's great um and mistress death if, if this is actually Mistress Death, that would have huge implications on the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe, because, because Thanos exists, and they could already be laying, sowing the seeds for Infinity War, if this actually turns out to be Death. Oh my god. I, I want that to be true, but I feel like it's not... But um, think about it, though. They introduced the Inhumans last year, and they don't have a movie until 2019, Really? I didn't even know they had a movie. Yeah, they're getting a movie in 2019 after Infinity War. Is uh, Daisy going to be in it? D- no one knows. It's in like four years. <laughs> That's true. But I feel like considering how popular her character is, I should at least say that much. I think they're they're probably going to have her be the liaison between S.H.I.E.L.D. and Attilan. Okay. And the and Black Bolt and all them. The, the movie's probably going to focus on the royal family. Um... But yeah, this if this this it thing is is Mistress Death, then yeah, it, it has huge implications on the Marvel Universe. I, she is one of the embodiments of the Marvel Universe, along with I- Eternity and Infinity and all that junk, which again directly ties into Thanos. Oh, Eternity, I haven't heard, seen any of these characters before. Eternity's design is amazing. Yeah, all these the, the like these characters that are related to Thanos and the Infinity <laughs> Gems and all this junk oh, is shit. ridiculous. Um, like, these characters are, like, the embodiments of ideas. Oh my god, Oblivion is awesome. Yeah, which is... eh. So, but another theory that people are having that's a little more grounded than the death thing is that whatever the planet is, um, if it's ego or if it's something else, just driving people mad, people are saying that will is, is the death thing. So, so oh so he's controlling the the evil and that he's yeah that a, he is that, the evil oh and I okay and that would imply that he's trying to get back to Earth just yes like havoc on Earth oh jeez and like so somebody cool. said on on the the Shield subreddit that they that apparently Will and Death or it or whatever evil are never seen in the same frame even in like the last Sandstorm part where it's switching yeah. between Death in the astronaut outfit and Will. They're never. It, it always oh, switches true. back and forth. Like Simmons, it's, Simmons sees Will, then Simmons sees sees the astronaut, then Simmons sees Will, then Simmons sees the astronaut. Never at the same time. And you you hear the noises of their interaction, like the gunfire, I think. Yeah. After after Simmons yeah. leaves, you hear a gunshot, and then she finds Fitz. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I, that does hold some ground, but. So okay, so. I think I don't. I, I don't think it's death because I think what it is is um, some kind of. So does ego have like the power to like cause illusions or anything like that? Because I think what it is is some kind of evil force that can recreate any kind of like fears, just because of the fact that um it had the astronaut back from the dead, and I don't that wasn't like a corpse because he he took the helmets off of them and put them on sticks. Yeah. So that wasn't like a ra- like a corpse raised from the dead. That was a straight up like an illusion created to scare them and to trick them. So yeah. I don't know whose power that would be, but so whatever the evil is um it had to ha- it has to have ability an ability similar to that i don't know another crackpot theory though is right, shoot it out based on the fact that simmons says that this is hell and nothing is nothing is not intentional in this show wait you're fucking telling me that the guy who got trapped in the explosion and the thing went to this dimension yes Ah, I knew it. I think that this planet 
is the planet that Simmons and Fitz found in the season one episode where the guy is jumping between dimensions and they think that he's a ghost. Yeah. It's like the Halloween like, episode or something. Oh yeah, and he says I'm from hell. That's what he says. He yeah. says I'm from hell. And I, I'm I'm and that would make <laughs> if this planet is is hell, quote unquote hell, then that would make the the death being Hella, who is one hell. of the Satan analogs in the Marvel universe, who controls one of the nine realms, which is hell with one L. Um and that would also make sense to to why this is in a different solar system, which is on the far reaches of the galaxy, because it's a different realm, Hell, and that being could be Hela, and this could just be a very early version of her Hell. And I'm pretty sure it's been shown, um, like in the comics before, that her version of Hell is not very populated a lot. So, I don't know. That's yeah, another I'm theory. I'm gonna do some uh, some research. Really fast. Agents of Shield repairs. I'm gonna see if it's specifically. I'm gonna like try to find the picture of the planet because there is at one point she's like I figured out where yes. it came from and it shows like a slight hologram showing it's, the thing. I I'm pretty I remember that that hologram and it, it's it's like just vague mountains. Yeah, that's true. Which there like, are also vague mountains on this planet, so I don't know. Huh. <laughs> I think it's either I don't. It, it, if it's Ego, they're never going to show Ego. If it's Mistress Death, they're just going to, like, leave her alone and until Infinity War. Um, and they, they haven't... I mean, they've done something like this before, because technically S.H.I.E.L.D. caused Age of Ultron. So, oh, yeah. What, what, okay, that, that, was, that was a question I meant to ask a while, but like, it's not really related to the topic. But I remember um, Reyna was talking about... Um, like she said, like I saw a vision. Metal men will take over the earth, and I thought that was that was a nod to Age of Ultron, right? Yes, that was before. That and was then, the Ultron tie-in. And then the episode after that was after was like directly after Ultron because I remember yes. like the episode after they were like, yeah, uh, you single-handedly stopped a robot army. Mm-hmm. So they just I, I, that was weird to me because they didn't talk about it at all in between. Like they just went straight from like right before to right after. Well, that's like, I, I that's because was... the episode the, Age of Ultron came out between those episodes. Yeah, I, I oh that's oh like right like like. Like yeah. the actual timeline of when they came out. Oh, yeah. Okay. So like the the Reina episode happened, and then like a couple days later, like literally like three days later, I went to see Age of Ultron, and then after that, the two the next Tuesday that episode came out. Um, so yeah, Reina saw the Ultron stuff, and the 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 reason Age of Ultron happened was because they found Loki's scepter, and it can be argued oh, that Ultron yeah. would have been would have been created anyway, but. The reason Age of Ultron happened in the way that it did is because S.H.I.E.L.D. found Loki's scepter. And they, they, Coulson was like, send in the Avengers, Maria. Oh, yeah. Okay, and then, and they did. Yeah, I, uh, I, like, totally just, like, was like, okay, and I went to the next episode, and then it totally, like, dropped all that, and I was just like, whatever. And I, I kind of just put the pieces together right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, a. Uh, I just I felt like they would have talked about it more. Like, man, remember that time we a giant robot army? Like, they just like the like well, especially the Inhumans. Like, I mean, it, it makes sense that they wouldn't talk about it as much because it didn't directly affect them. It was just something that happened on the other side of the world. That's true. I guess and they Shield, are the, isolated. Yeah, and Shield didn't have too much of a hand in it except for Project Theta, which wasn't sup- which wasn't directly Shield. I mean, it was, but it wasn't like to the public. It wasn't directly Shield. So. It, it makes sense to me. Like, the reason Winter Soldier had so many effects is because it literally broke S.H.I.E.L.D. So yeah, they had true. to deal with that at great length. Um, and still being dealt with. Yeah. Still, all of Season 2 was because of Winter Soldier. I mean, even now, I, I, st- I can't believe that fucking Ward is... Starting up Hydra again. Of course he is. I, I, thought, Ward. <laughs> I thought maybe he would, like... Start up his own new organization called like the the wards, the wards, the wards. And the wardettes. Wardra, the wardra, wardra, <laughs> wardra, totally. Wield, wield. It's like war. It's like shield, but I, whatever you the S is replace it with a du- with W for ward. I the, forgot what it stands for. The ward. Wait, <laughs> shit! I can't say shield with like I can say what shield stands for with the S, but I can't with a different letter. <laughs> The wow. Ward Homeland Intervention Enforcement and Logistics Division. There you yeah. go. <laughs> wield. Wield. <laughs> they they all their their battle cry is we wield things. They never really figured out the back evil half. For but the most part. We wield evil. 
Ah, <laughs> fucking Ward. God. What an attractive <laughs> asshole. <laughs> the Ward cast. Brought to you by Kevin and Dylan. <laughs> like, oh, that reminds me of when uh, Hydra took over and the intro was replaced with Hydra. Like, the Hydra yeah, logo. The Hydra that, logo. I yeah. love that so much. It was such, like, a small thing that they did, but it was so awesome. I mean, that, that's another thing. The fucking intro in this episode was so good. Oh, yeah. What was it? It was like, so like well a, done. It was just, like, they, they cut to a wide shot of the planet and just Agents oh, yeah. of S.H.I.E.L.D. And that, and that new, like, spacey font came up and just stood there in silence for a little bit. Yeah. And then went I away. I uh, I noticed I it. Living, I was watching it in the living room and I had a lot of family business. Oh, okay. Oh, it was so good. I loved this episode. Have you, has your opinion changed at all? Uh, I, I mean, I, I don't. You I certainly way? don't think it's it sucks as much as I did at the beginning. Okay, okay. Uh, now that I know the comic connections. Yeah. I mean, because to me, when I saw the the you know the figure in the cloak, like in the cloak, I was just like, mm-hmm. "Are you fucking kidding me?" Like, like, <laughs> like it's evil. I was expecting something original and unique, but it's literally just like a fucking guy in a dark cloak, and he's yeah. like, "Ah, oh, I'm evil," and she's like, "Ah, oh, it's evil." <laughs> it's like, can't you tell? Look at my dark clothing. How evil I am. Yeah, I went, I went crazy when I saw that, cause I was like, "Oh, it's death!" It literally, like, like that's that's death. What? That's, oh. you, there's no dancing around that, guys. It's fucking death. Oh, well, I mean, it still could be because of the fact that um, you know, he brought back the astronaut, or whatever evil force it was. Brought I think back it was just like I think, I think it was think implied that's an illusion. No, I think it was implied that death was just in the astronaut suit because she had really? like. It pa- it purposely panned down to his hand to show that he was holding a chain. Oh yeah. And the the like when they first showed her, she had like chains and junk all around her. So, I think it's just did death dressed up in an outfit, or it could be Hella conjuring something, or it could okay, be so ego is, being like this, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> what is this Hella? Hella. How do I spell that? H e l a. Oh, okay, that's definitely not like not hella, hella not like the well, it's, this episode was hella good. Okay, so do you have any theories or any like what theory are you subscribing to so far, if any? Uh, I, I I'm not subscribing entirely to any of the theories that you've thrown out. Okay, I think whatever it is, I don't think it's death. Um, no, I think that it's it might be um, ego. I think it's some evil force that can't be seen, at least not yet. That is creating these illusions to scare them, and that death, the black cloak, the, the, the cloak figure, was one of the illusions. The astronaut was one of the illusions. I think it's just this evil force that is trying to scare them, and uh, yeah, I and, and kill them. But I, I don't think it's death. I think it's some evil force that is yet to be discovered that we will figure out when they go back. I'm trying to think of an evil force in the comics. <laughs> I mean, like, what could be applied to that? All, like, I, I mean, is it wasn't she said um, Thanos was like an evil dark blob of cloud? Is that a thing? That was Galactus in the I Ultimate Universe. So. Oh, I'm dumb. I just uh, remembered why the monolith is vaguely dangerous to Inhumans. Oh, um, what is it? I don't know if this is just applying to Daisy or if it. It, or if it's all in humans, but when Daisy was near the monolith while it was open, it was killing her. I think that was just because of her power. I think it was just yeah. I think it's just because of her, of, of her being she quake. She the frequencies, yeah. But like she like even when she something. stopped hit, because I I'm trying to remember because this was in like episode two or something. I'm trying to remember if when it just randomly opened it hurt her, but no because on the ship when it was opening it didn't hurt her at all. It didn't hurt any of them. That's true. Well, that's because it was contained in the box thingy. But, well, I, I mean, I guess, but that box had holes in it. That's and true. it was open at one point. Yeah, that's when it sucked in Simmons. <laughs> and when uh, Fitz was knocking on it like crazy. Right. Shit, so... But even if it even if it being open did hurt Daisy, why would it hurt Daisy? Like, or in humans in general? Uh... I mean... Honestly, it could just be. This is like a totally a theory that has nothing to do with anything. Like, there's no basis for this theory. But uh, I they talked about how it was a sacrifice. 
Um, like they used to sacrifice people with it. Maybe because there were some Inhumans that were hard to kill or impossible to kill. Instead of killing them, they had this monolith. You just sent them there? Hmm. the monolith. Maybe that's how they got rid of the Inhumans back in the day, because the Inhumans have been around for generations. But the Inhumans have always but been secret. in secret. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's always, like, the thing about the Inhumans, is they're, they've always been there with giant cities, but we've never known about it until some inciting incident happens. In this case, S.H.I.E.L.D. I mean, I guess the sacrifices that were done before were mainly just... I, what was that, that that scene it showed? Oh, jeez, my, like, pop filter just, like, dropped onto my head because I don't have it on right now, which I should, but it's... <laughs> whatever. Because um, there was that there was that scene um, where it showed, like, the olden days and medieval times when, uh, what's his name? The, the Asgardian... The old Asgardian librarian. Game. Oh, right. I don't remember his name either. I know who you're talking <laughs> about, though. And he was like, I remember fucking what this thing was used for. And it was like, it was like flashback. And it's like, uh, they were like sacrificing people for it. They in, were sending it. people into it to yeah, travel. To it yeah, 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 to travel to in there. But I mean, they were like, no one's ever returned. So they pretty much knew that he wasn't going to come back. Yeah. But NASA did the same thing. Well, no, but they had a plan. No, actually, that's another thing that they didn't quite explain in the episode. Is uh, uh, Simmons asked him, he's like, "How did you guys know what the conditions of the he planet?" He said it's above his be? pay grade. That's right. Yeah. So I mean, that could have just been a joke. <laughs> no, and, I don't. I don't think it would be. Yeah. So I mean, so that's that's another that's another un- unanswered question: is how did NASA know? Either, either it, either NASA sent them not knowing. And they just didn't they want to it. tell anyone because it was unethical, or, or Hydra. That's true. <laughs> or some other organization, or Inhumans, or, or Kree. Anything else? Or Jesus Christ! <laughs> the show is so there's or, so much shit going on at once. Or scrolls. This is what it's like watching these shows as someone who reads comic books every week. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking head hurts didn't after every didn't episode. They mentioned the scrolls. Did they mention the scrolls recently, like for mm, the first time? No. I kind of swear I heard them talking about scrolls. Like I guess I misheard. No, if they did, I I would be like. You would have noticed, yeah. Yeah, my mind would have blown open. If they mentioned fucking scrolls, then everyone, every every episodes, people would be like, oh, what if what if this person's a scroll? <laughs> like shit. Oh, cause can scrolls like transform? Yeah, that's their thing. Is they they oh. transform perfectly. And they can even take people's powers. So, like, that was one of the theories that people were just like, fuck you. Or when people would say, oh, Simmons is a scroll. That's why Simmons she wants to go scroll. back. <laughs> She's like, god damn it. No. Oh, yeah. Like, Simmons, like, went there and died. And then a scroll came back. And then a scroll replaced her. her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, and then that's the, they're paving the way for Secret Invasion. Se- uh... Secret Invasion was um, a comic book event or a Marvel Comics event back in, like, 2008 where it was revealed that for like the past eight years p- scrolls had been had been posing as some of the, like the biggest marvel characters and like spider woman <laughs> was a scroll for for a while <laughs> that must have that must have been disappointing to hear it was fu- well it, it's they never made it clear how long the characters were taken <laughs> she's always been a scroll you, you don't spider woman isn't even real <laughs> well it was it was sometime after she started working for shield but that that's the fucking scrolls could be anywhere. I'm a scroll. You're a scroll. Shit. I'm not supposed to tell me. You're not supposed to tell me. The scroll Federation is gonna be pissed off. The scroll Federation. I don't know what the fuck the scroll organization is called. The, the scroll scrolls. The Cree scroll war. They need to do. <laughs> They need to go back. They need to have more Kree on the show. Be like, hey, this is what's happening. The monolith, yeah, like, it's dangerous to inhumans because this and this. Yeah, I wish they had more Kree. Because they had that one guy, and he was just a blue guy. He was like, hey, guy. He didn't even look like the, uh, like the Kree in the, the, the vat. Ronan? Yeah. Well, that's because Ronan had a bunch of paint on and a giant hat. Like, he was a royal dude, so he was all, like, dolled up. But Vintak was just blue. <laughs> He's wearing human ass clothes. No, no, no. I mean, um, not him. I mean, like the Cree that was oh, like, half dead. Oh, him. Lost. Oh, well, that's probably because that's like a really old Cree, uh, and the and the guy that Vintac was probably using that, um, the like juice that made his skin pale 
He's probably also using it to maybe change his appearance somewhat. Like, yeah, that we, we've seen in we've seen Ronan. Like, Ronan doesn't look like that that the GH Cree either. So I'm I'm pretty sure that the GH Cree is just like one of the one of the Cree or close to one of the Cree that came down to originally plant the Inhumans. Like I they mean, just found his body somewhere. I, I mean, it could just be that there's like three different, different variations. Somehow. That's true. Maybe it's a monkey Cree. It's a monkey Cree. Monkey Cree confirmed. I think so, that about wraps everything up. Yeah. So thanks for <laughs> listening. Or, I mean, I guess if you just watched the, the 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 static image for like forty minutes, good for you. Except for that one thing that I told you to put up. Right? I'm not gonna put that up there. Oh, okay. Well, then that watch. defeats. It's a podcast, not a vodcast. <laughs> Maybe we'll upgrade eventually. I'll get you a nice webcam and we can do a vodcast. But that's it for what did we call the show. The show about Shield is that that we're, that we're going with? The fuck go with? It? <laughs> yeah, yeah right. Shield. All right, cool. Thanks, thanks for listening, thanks guys. For listening. Have a good day. Be here, same time, same place, next week, maybe. Okay. I don't know. Bye bye. <laughs>